Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you're being fruitful and experiencing the favor and love of the Lord wherever you are. So, um, the Bible says that for the Lord hid these things from the wise of the world and gave them to the simple to the babes you know and uh this is very interesting that you know the people that are working for the enemy they will never see they will never know that they're leading the world to destruction because they're meant to be deceived so everything they do Satan will, will deceive them that they're doing it for the good, but that is also part of the grand deception. But those that will see are they that will stay strong in the Lord. Paul says in uh, Corinthians 7, uh, 1 Corinthians 7 13, you know, he says that where prophecies are, they will cease, where tongues are, they will, you know. They will fail where tongues are they will cease but one thing will stay and that is love i mean all these prophecies all these things that the lord showed us shows us he can show them to us to warn his people and he repents himself and he doesn't let them happen we have seen that with jonah we have seen that with jonah and Many other prophets, you know, the Isaiahs, uh, Ezekiel, that God warns about this impending destruction. And if people, if the people of the land heed, He saves them. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, he's not a hypocrite. He's not like us human beings. And he's just and loving. So when you hear all these things, you shouldn't get worried. But one thing we should keep in mind is that we have to stay obedient. We have to stay in connection to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit in obedience. And we, I know we talk about all these things of uh, the end of the world, uh, you know, what I shared recently and all that. That stuff is not to scare you. That stuff is to show you or it is to warn us of what, of what is in the works of this impending destruction. That no one knows how it's going to happen. But the Lord says, be watchful always. He says, be watchful always. Because now you see there's a, there's a very great chance of one dying when they are not ready. And we look at all these things. Let this be our daily walk with Christ so that we can have pure hearts, you know, unto repentance. That hey, you struggle with, with thoughts, bring them unto submission to God. Pray to God. God gave us the, uh, the, the Lord's Prayer. That is how we're supposed to pray. That is guidance of how we're supposed to pray. Supposed to call upon His will to come down on the earth. I mean, that Lord's Prayer is literal, like you prayed, but He also gave us guidance on how to pray. That you, let your name be. Uh, hello, it be thy name. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be held holy. You understand? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on the earth, Lord. Not our, not ours. Take it literally, and also let it guide you on how to pray. You know, to learn to pray, that we should submit. I mean, our, our we should uh, we ask him for forgiveness, and we also forgive those that have wronged us. 
where we find it hard, we invite him and we're like, Lord, let your will be done. Come in, come in, Lord, and let your will be done in my life. I don't care how, Lord. I'm tired of investigating how you do your things. Because you're a God of mystery, but love. He's a mysterious God, not the bad kind of mystery. He is love. It is a mysterious love. That is the best thing I can say. And the thing is that the more we try to investigate God, we're never going to make it, guys. Keep in mind the thing that matters is being obedient, following God, no matter what, no matter who lives your life. It is about seeking God. Now, you might struggle with that. You might say, how do I seek God? How do I know that this is of God? If you have seeked knowledge of these high things and nothing is happening, do not dwell on it. God will come and reveal it in his, in his right time. Because I know if, if it's for you to know, if it's for me to know, we will know. And look at all these things like we lived in the world and we knew nothing. But right now God comes and he saves us. He came and he saved us. And he starts showing us pro profound things, you know. The plan that he has for us in our lives. You know, the, the, uh, the scripture in Jeremiah, I think it's uh, Jeremiah 3.33 or 33.3. I usually confuse that. You know, that he knows the plans. You know, let me try to read it. That he knows the plans that he has for us. Plans to prosper us, you know. To give us an expected end. I think it's that one. It's that particular one. Jeremiah. Three, uh, no, then it's 33. Three. I usually confuse that. You can't go to hell because of not knowing a particular address of, of a scripture. You just have to know the power, you just have to seek God. Call unto me, and I will show thee. great and mighty things which thou knoweth not you know i mean we call unto him so that he shows us these plans you know and he he also says that um later on in uh still i think in jeremiah that he has a good plan he has a plan for us a plan to prosper us you know it's a good plan that god has but when we interfere with his, I don't know if um, anyone out there has ever had, let's say you're planning a surprise, birthday or graduation party or, I mean, anything, any kind of celebration, and it's a surprise. But as you're trying to do it, the person you're trying to plan it for, they're just making it hard, you know? But you have these good intentions, you know? Maybe it's your child, uh, they finally graduated and you've got them a car and then you want to surprise them with a car, you want to surprise them with these keys and all that. And they're just making it hard for you. Just every single time you're trying to, you know, like, hey, let me finally confirm with the car dealership and, you know, call in the car, you know, do the paperwork and all that. Because you tell the dealership that, hey, I'll be ready. Uh, I'll call you when I'm ready. But book that car, you know. And every time you just write about to think of it, you receive bad news about this person. You're like, this person has been caught doing this. I'm like, well, but I'm planning to give this person and they're not even ready for it, you understand? With God and we receive all these strange doctrines of god will bless you regardless god is not going to bless you if you're not obedient if you're not doing what you're supposed to do in his will you can read the first psalm if you want to if you're one of those people that seek prosperity and and success 
you can read that it will show you how to be successful and to prosper that to prosper you have to be in line with the word of god so that you will be fruitful in the right in, in the right seasons you know so much can be said guys we can do everything we want we can try to follow god we can follow these 10 commandments but what is the spirit of god speaking into our lives where is he leading us because god left him here to lead and to guide us and we're not letting that happen i want to share with you the story of the rich young man and i find this so profound that it was the reason why this young man couldn't even come to god Matthew 19 from verse 16 to 22. Jesus and the rich young man. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt to enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love, shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from the youth up. What do I lack? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt to be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But the young man, Heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What was God trying to do? What was Christ teaching this man? He was telling him, you have done all these commandments. You really want to have eternal life, fine. But you have had all these commandments. But you have to, if you want to have riches and be perfect, you have to love. What is to love? Or that you have to leave the true gospel. Go and give everything you have to the poor. Go and give all your possessions. <laughs> hmm? Give to the poor, and thou shalt have to. And he said, that's verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt to be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. In the literal sense, in that guy's in that guy's case, Christ meant it. And go sell what you have. Because he knew that this guy loved all these things and they would keep him away from the Lord. But in the same case, to do that kind of work, it takes love. It is love. Love which this young man lacked. That he was living so much in the flesh. He was living for himself, not for God. He hadn't died to the flesh, so he could never come to Christ. And right now, it is the same thing happening. It is the same thing that Satan is doing with us right now. He wants you to be so engrossed in yourself. He wants you to spend money on that pornography site. He wants you to spend money on these useless things that you do not even need in your life. When people out there that need you, they need your time, they need your input, they need your money, they need your, they need your comfort. All these things are going to block you from, them, from that, from serving God. And when you talk about things like this, people say, you want their money. It's not about that. You can give yourself, you can give your time. It doesn't kill to go and comfort someone who's going through hardship. As you can see today, 
where someone cries out to another and they're like, hey, I'm going through this. I've lost my job. I'm about to lose everything. The same thing to do is to sit down and help that person financially. And also pray that God guides him to the right place, that he is also able to hear the, the word of God. And you comfort him and tell him that, hey, things are going to be fine. This is only a season. But what we do, we only encourage. This is only a season. We do not bring that hand. That is not what God does to us. God, he comforts us through the Holy Spirit. He tells us this is going to be fine. And he leads someone through our way in life. And he blesses us. We do not need to wait for a miracle to happen in that person's life. We are supposed to be the miracles in people's lives. And oftentimes, I wonder, why do people, why don't people start with their own neighborhoods? These people suffering in your own neighborhood. It doesn't kill to give someone a meal, a meal, a meal. You don't know why someone is going through what they're going through. Maybe it's their fault, maybe it's not, maybe they're innocent. Life caught up with them. It's a season maybe. And that is a true gospel. Because this guy, he could not do that. He could not love. He simply had no love in him. That's why he couldn't come to Christ. He wasn't ready to live the, the life of love. Because you see, to love is to die. It's to kill your flesh, it's to kill yourself. And you walk as love leads you. What is love? Love is Christ. Love is the Holy Spirit. Love is God. Oh, sorry about that. And what is love? Love is listening. Love is long suffering. Love is to wait. Love is to be patient. Love is to die. Love is to kill your own interests for another. Love is to encourage. But how many how, uh, people have the love? How many people are walking in that way? Very few people are walking in that way today. And um, all these things are to keep us from faith because faith is what sparks this love. It's, it's the fire that that keeps it's it's the fire of love faith faith is the fuel to this fire called love and the more you have faith the more i mean you grow into love and how does this love uh, faith grow by reading the word of god by seeing how much god loves you by seeing how much by seeking him by by waiting for his leadership his instruction into your life we have the holy spirit right now in this new covenant, we are led by the Holy Spirit through everything. He, he will lead you to places and you're like, what? In my all my all the years of my life, I, I would never have come here in my own ability. But the Spirit of God touches you, He moves you, He leads you to go to a certain place, and you're a blessing to people. You know? And that's what God wants us to do. He uses people, He wants us to be blessings, you know. And um, for the most part, that is service of God. That is the gospel of God. Where God leads you to another place, maybe another nation, maybe another neighborhood, maybe another community. And you leave your comfort zone and go to live for those people, to love them, to laugh with them, to encourage them. And you're not looking at, oh, you're this religion, you're from this world, you're from this, because we are supposed to love those in our house, you know, in the house of God first but if someone that's not in the house of god needs you are you gonna stay away from them because let's say you identify as one religion and someone is from another religion but they need you are you gonna stand and help them are you gonna walk with them the walk of love you know because right now even in the church itself people play church they don't love god they struggle, and their struggle has overshadowed their love for God. That, that they love the world more than they love God. They do have some love for God, but it is so hard for them to lift a finger for God. It is so hard for them to take it to a practical place. 
it is a love that's just within it's not nurtured and um, how do we start moving for Christ by surrendering by listening by hearing By judging and gauging what is right to do in a situation, you ask yourself, what would I want someone to do for me? Because Christ, he gave us uh, modes of guidance, you know, uh, uh, a way to, uh, to weigh the mode of operation. Because he said, love your neighbor as you love thyself. If you're truly in a situation, what would you love someone to do for you? That is what you have to do for them. If you want someone to slap you when you're, when you're going through an argument, then slap someone. If that's what you would have wanted, then do it. But if you love someone to pull you out, uh, uh, you know, on the side and calm you down and comfort you and speak sense to you, you know, with love, not condemning you, then go do the same. If you'd love someone to comfort you through a situation you're going through, go do the same. That is, that's all Christ is asking for. If you want someone to get out of their way to reach out to you, go do the same. But if you don't do that, no one is going to do it too. And we don't have to wait for people to do this. We have to do it first. And it's not even about doing it that we gain. It's, we are doing it because it is the way that our Lord requires us to live. It is the way that our God is going to look at our works and he's like, did you comfort your friends when they needed you? Did you comfort these people when they were going through this? They didn't need this. They needed you there. That is what God is going to do. And with so much at our disposal today, we have no excuses. The more this world grows modern and all that, all these things you're hearing, these rumors of war, this is going to happen, this economy is going to fall, that stuff is not going to happen, I'm telling you. Because Christ is going to come. That is Satan shouting, screaming, trying to scare people. He's trying to instill fear in all of us so that we no longer look at God, but look at the noise. Because in the book of Revelation, it says that men's heart were... Uh, something like, yeah, men's hearts failed them because of fear. Fear is the number one thing the enemy uses today. When you are covered in fear, you're not going to lift a hand for God. Because you're going to fear what people are going to do to you, what people are going to think of you. What um, You can even fear to speak, to say, speak the truth here on YouTube because you fear for your channel to be deleted. If it's truly God that has led you to do that, do it. If they delete you, fine. Maybe he will let them, he will do a miracle somewhere, you know, in the algorithm and nothing happens. Maybe they will cancel you. And that's your persecution. We never know. You know, we are not here to please the world. We are here to love those that are struggling with the world and to lead them to the Mount Zion, you know. And we have to be patient with them. We have to be patient with them. We shouldn't be like people of the world that want their rights, that they see when certain groups go for um, parades or uh, protests, they go and oppose immediately. As we're supposed to stand on the side and wait in wisdom. And we seize the opportunity to comfort and to lead these people to go. We're not supposed to judge anyone. Because the same judgment will be placed upon us. And it will be so painful in that day to see that, Oh Lord, I wish I had listened. I wish I had done this right. When hard all the time. We have the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, people. The Holy Spirit is there for everyone. You have heard him. You have heard him speak. But because you're not walking in that way to enhance that voice, to hear it more clearly, you are lost. You listen to the noise around you. Shut, sh shut off the noise around you. Shut, shut, shut the noise around you. 
Let's keep away from this entertainment in the world, this all that. Maybe you could get back to it later on and, and God will show you, he'll reveal things. Because me right now, I fell, I fell away from entertainment of the world. But perhaps if I go and watch a movie, if I decided to go and watch a movie, I wouldn't watch that movie in, in, in ignorance or what. Because if I see these movies today, what they're doing, they are preaching the word of God to the world. Though they have profanity in them, but they are preaching. They are warning people in a very subtle way, in a very subliminal way. They are warning people. I know it's upside down, but they are warning people. And God is even going to use this in judgment. He'll be like, even the entertainment you loved, it was warning you of the things to come, but you didn't listen. You didn't see it. I'm telling you, however wicked that, that, that movie, that thing looks, it is to warn you. But you rather enjoy it and, and let it pass you. And then you just become the wickedness that is in there. The rituals that they do. But the thing is, what one has to do is to surrender and say, I do not know. Because through the time you say, I do not know, God is going to come and let you know. Don't be the kinds that go around saying, oh, false prophets here, false prophets. I do not even waste my time vetting that, oh, this person is false, this person is false. You know? But I try to show you that, hey, find someone has said that, someone has spoken this. I can't mention something about a lie that is spreading because sometimes it's necessary, but not all the time. But the best thing to do is to point someone to the boat. Point you to the boat so that you start fishing other than staying at the shore and receive the fish. What if all the boats are gone and there's no more fish for you to receive at the shore? What are you going to do? You're going to die hungry. So the thing is, we have to let ourselves go. Killing the flesh means I cast away my fear. I cast away my interests. If my interests come between me and the word of God, then they have to go. It is okay for you for, for you to go to holiday. It is okay for you to enjoy a nice movie, a good family movie. It is okay. With no profanity, with no prof profane language, with nothing going on. That is hard to find. That, that movie is hard to find these days. But if you have some entertainment that you can watch, it is okay. But not at the cost of the word of God. If it shadows the word of God, if it keeps you away from the word of God, then it is not healthy for you to watch. Maybe in the season, maybe even forever. If a certain song is keeping you from the word of God, from doing the word of God, I mean, and like, oh, we paid, we paid for tickets to go for a movie right and it's on friday but there's fellowship around the same time what are you gonna do are you gonna go for the movie or fellowship are you gonna go for the holiday or are you gonna go for 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 uh, to that appointment that god has sent you to this is what i'm trying to say to hear god to follow him we have to die and the beauty is that he killed us already. He killed the old, the old man. And we received the new man, but we still want to live like the old man. We live life, we have no idea when we're gonna die. Could be eating a piece of chicken and you, you, you choke on a bone. Could be drinking coke. <laughs> and it goes to the wrong place. And your lungs get clogged and destroyed and you cough and die. And so many ways death can come upon us. We never anticipate this. Is Christ, are we going to meet Christ 
and he says, Welcome, my faithful servant. Or is he going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. This is to encourage us to go back to the foundation of the Word of God. That in everything that we do, we have to challenge people and tell them, fine, this has been said. But are you ready? If the Lord comes now, if the Lord came now, would you be ready to meet him? Or would you run away? Because it says that on, uh, at his coming, even the mountains fl fled. And they were also scared to see him. Like, even men could try and go and hide in the mountains. The mountains fled. Those that wanted to hide in the caves. The caves also, they, they ran. <laughs> they disappeared. You know? And um, maybe it's literal. Maybe it's, it's uh, you know. But I know what he meant anyways. And uh, the thing is, when you're left alone, let's say the falling away meets you and you have nowhere to go to church, you have no one to fellowship with, how are you going to be able to stand in that loneliness? Because then you have to know the word of God and you must have the Holy Spirit guiding you. We only meet as men to fellowship, to strengthen each other, to point ourselves to the word of God and we're like, hey, this is happening, but it's not that important. God is the way, you know. And let me tell you something, it's so, it is so tempting for one to talk about all the things to come, the things to do what, but let me tell you something. Anyone can prophesy anything and it's even on point and still doesn't happen. Jonah was prophesying, to, to, telling the city of Nineveh they had to repent, but they were never destruct, destroyed. There was no destruction because they, they repented. Repentance and changing from our evil ways brings delight in the Lord, the Lord's heart. Because he knows that, hey, now my people have finally seen. Now I can lead them to a good place. That is what we need to do. That is what we need to do. And we shouldn't grow weary that when we preach, you see only five people have watched the video when you share the word of God you see there's only ten it doesn't matter one soul one soul going to the heavens I'm telling you it is a celebration God will be grateful he's not like us that want numbers God is not like us that want numbers even if he got one soul he'll be so grateful he'll be so grateful he got one soul because in one soul he can get a thousand God is still in the business of calling us. But a time is going to come when everyone is alone. This abomination of desolation, it has sat in the church. And the saints are being overcome. That the churches are no longer preaching the word of God. They're preaching prosperity, they're telling stories. It's like going for, for, for Comic Con in church, I'm telling you. Like people are just... Oh, what's going on in your life? People in church sleeping around. They don't care. But the thing is, that time is going to come when none of those churches, when each and every one of them is infiltrated and you're left alone. When even your brethren, they're perverse, you know. You go, you go try to speak to them, they're perverts. When you're standing alone, the time is coming. The time is coming. When you're in a wilderness, you're alone. You're dealing with things alone, you and your family. Your family might even go away from you. I mean, they might also depart, but you have to strengthen them. And you have to stand if they decide to go with the world. 
just be strong and because God is preparing us for, for times like that. He's already happening, guys. I pray that you stay strong, that you experience the, the fruits of the Spirit, and that you have this yearning, this hunger, this thirst to be led by God rather than your flesh, rather than your own spirit. Do not listen to these seducing voices around us. Oh, there's a miracle here. Oh, this happened. Oh, this experience. You don't need to listen to those things right now. Experiences are there. You will have them if you really follow God. But let us be open to let him in. And it's not about the experience. It is about the obedience. It is about this healthy relationship. It's about attaining this love so that we are prepared and ready to go to him to that place that he has prepared for us. God bless you. Bye-bye.